Is Cat Williams telling the truth? Welcome to Splash Talk, where we discuss pop culture, entertainment, and movies. Stay tuned. If you've already been a subscriber, welcome back, Splashers, and let's get into this. Cat Williams pulls no punches in a candid, no-holds-barred interview. Ricky Smiley supposed to be Money Mike? Steve Harvey wearing a man wig? Cedric the Entertainer stealing jokes? Kevin Hart, an industry plant? And much more. Let's dive right in. Cat had a lot of fiery opinions, bold statements, and maybe a few surprises that is more than just comedy talk. It's a deep dive into the industry relationships and rivalries. Cat Williams shakes up the world with his Club Shay Shay interview. Have you already watched the interview? So Ricky Smiley said that he originally was supposed to play Money Mike in Friday After Next. You were originally supposed to play Cat Williams' character. Yes. And Cat Williams was supposed to play my character when he did his interview with Shannon Sharp. Cat Williams came on and he blew that to smithereens. This man told you he had Cat Williams role. He was gonna be Money Mike. He said, what does he look like being a 5'5 black man trying to be a Santa Claus and why would he get switched from one role to another? He did say that there was about 200 people that auditioned for this part and that he was the one that played it the best and he wrote a lot of the roles. With Ricky Smiley saying that he was supposed to play Money Mike, it just doesn't even make sense because why would he be the person that's supposed to play it? He got the part and then, oh, there was this other read that he had to do to be able to lock in Money Mike. But Cat Williams came in, wrote parts of Money Mike's role, added in the Prowler, brought in Bishop Don Juan, did all these different things. And also you gotta look at it like this. How good would Ricky Smiley have been as Money Mike? I don't even know nothing that he's actually funny in. Cat Williams is hilarious. Cat Williams is one of my favorite comedians and I just absolutely can't see in any world as to why Ricky Smiley would think that he would be the one to play that role. But it's funny because after that, Ricky Smiley went on his radio show and said, oh, I auditioned for the role of Money Mike and that I was almost having the role, that he was one of the last ones being chose. He had one more read to do before he was gonna get the role. But then that didn't make sense because then he's also like, yeah, I couldn't have played that role like Cat Williams played that role. So which one is it? You were able to do the role, you had the role, or you just never had this role. You didn't do anything with this role. You weren't gonna be Cat Williams' role. <laughs> he set the world ablaze with this because Cat Williams came for everybody that was saying anything or doing anything that was not to a certain standard. Some of the things he might be fabricating, we might not know everything's true for or not, but a lot of it sounds like Cat was right. Because even after this happened, Ice Cube even came out and said, Cat was 100 on a, on a few things. Uh, most of what he was saying. That the role was never given to Ricky Smiley. Cat Williams came in and blew his interview away. And originally he was supposed to have a small role similar to what the Santa Claus role was for Ricky Smiley. But because he was so good and he was doing all his parts and kept adding different things and impromptu to Money Mike, they increased his role and eventually he stole the show because he had great chemistry with Katie Aubert. He put a lot of things on film that Ricky Smiley or any other person probably could never do. And it skyrocketed his career. So Ice Cube even came and backed that story. Now, there were a couple parts that he said that Cat may have not have remembered exactly how it was, but overall, Cat was telling the truth. Cat Williams also accused Steve Harvey of wearing a man wig. So he's saying this whole time that we thought that he had the perfect lineup and the flat top haircut and everything that was just nice about his hair was actually fake, which we still don't know if that's true or not, but that's a crazy allegation to think that Steve this whole time pump faked us and had a wig on and also, he was accused of stealing all of Mark Curry's material and doing that as his own stand-up. So what's up with you and Steve, man? I ain't nothing, I ain't nothing with me. He's, well, Steve stole my material on his show, so I had a beef on that. That's crazy. Mark Curry was even saying that it was true that Steve stole this material from him. It's hard to kind of tell what's not true and what is true, but there's things that are leading to the fact that Cat Williams might actually be telling the truth. I don't know, but you guys can make your opinions on that. Also, in Detroit, they had a championship battle of comedians and Cat Williams tore Steve Harvey apart on stage. Now there's footage of that. That lace front high top fade cause he came out here to battle me got that. I played no motherfucking game. So we know that for sure that Cat Williams ate him up. And he's saying that that's a lot of the reasons why he gets hatred is because Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and Ricky Smiley have this group amongst other comedians that try to blackball him from jobs. Do you guys feel like that's true? I'm curious to see if Steve actually has a response to this because pretty much everyone else responded to Cat Williams' interview with Shannon Sharp and said their part as to what they believed was the truth versus what Cat Williams said on the interview, except for Steve. He's the only one we haven't heard a response from thus far. 
far. Steve Harvey's also said to have hated on Bernie Mac per Cat Williams that he tried to take the Ocean's Eleven role that Bernie Mac had. And also he was trying to get Bernie Mac kicked off the Kings of Comedy tour. These are a lot of allegations that are being thrown at Steve and we haven't heard anything to really debunk them. The stories that have come out is a lot of people have been backing Cat, including Ed Lover, who said that Cat was telling the truth in this situation. I believe Bernie Mac when he say Steve Harvey hated on him. But who's to know? Cat also claims that Cedric the Entertainer stole his joke where he's talking about driving around in a car. Because he did that joke in 1998, 1999, amazingly, Cedric had a very similar joke that was put out on the Kings of Comedy tour as the one that Cat Williams said. I'll let you guys be the judge whether you think this is the same joke or it could just be a coincidence. Cat also thinks that Cedric, the reason why he's not a movie star is because he's sitting up there built as big as a walrus. <laughs> and that's quite funny because, yeah, it makes sense that if you're not in shape and you don't choose to keep yourself up, that Hollywood would have to have a specific role for you to be an out of shape 50 year old man. That's another thing that I think Cat's telling the truth on when it comes to these roles and who gets the parts. Cedric actually responded to this and gave his feedback as to the jokes, as to why he says that the joke is his and it's not cats. I did the Kings of Comedy in 1999. Probably have been doing that joke six, seven years before that. Cat says that Cedric has four specials and they're not on Netflix or Tubi. So he's saying that people can't even watch his comedy specials because they're not good. Do you like Cedric the Entertainer? How often have you laughed at his jokes? Because as of right now, I see Cat winning in these arguments as to what he's stating versus what he has. He has 19 Netflix specials or 19 specials that are being televised. It's Pimpin' Pimpin', American Hustle, Pimp Chronicles. Those are all ones that are crushing a lot of stuff that I hear from these other comedians. My top three is probably Cat Williams, Dave Chappelle, and Eddie Murphy. Those would be my three comedians if I had to choose. One thing about Cat that you cannot dispute is the fact that he takes care of other comedians and actually puts them on tour with him. He has stated that he has taken 46 comedians on tour with him and paid them. And a lot of them say that they've been paid better than any of the other gigs that they've had. And another thing about him, his ego is not too big because he said he only brings comedians that he feels are funnier than him on tour with him. That's pretty cool. There's another thing that a lot of people have been coming out and saying that seems to be true is that he actually provides them bonus money by sending random girls up to the stage or catching them when they're coming off the stage to give them extra money because he feels like they did a great job. Seems like a stand-up guy to me. Of course, he's not always going to be telling the truth and there's going to be some things that don't match up, but a lot of the story looks like it's leaning his way as far as the things that he does. The man adopted six kids and had one of his own and does a lot for the communities. I, I like the guy. Faison Love tried to call him out saying that getting the Netflix special was easy. Cat has 12 Netflix specials and Faison has zero. Can't really fight that one, can't really argue it. If it's so easy, a lot of other comedians would have these Netflix specials and not just the greatest of the greatest comedians. Cat Williams said that when you're one of the people that are liked in the industry by the Illuminati or whoever it is, that you automatically get a light-skinned, weird-faced wife. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that part is hilarious, but it's like, what does that mean? Gotta dig into what comedians he possibly could be talking about here. But he said there are seven comedians that got this light-skinned, weird-faced wife. Let me know in the comments which comedians you think might be the ones that got these wives, okay? Because I'm running through the line and I can't figure out who's who yet, but it's kind of funny though. <laughs> Some people are offended thinking that he's coming at other black comedians, but he also stated it's God's side and the other side. So he feels like it doesn't matter what the race is. He's not coming at them because they're black. He's coming at them because he feels they're wrong and they're not telling the truth. What do you feel about that? Do you feel like he should have stood up for the other black comedians or is he right for calling them out for things that he feels like they're doing wrong or the injustices they're doing against him. I don't know. God's side, if you're religious, that's a strong side. If you're not religious, you know, pick your side, decide who you think is right. Cat also claims that Guy Tory had a special called Fat Tuesdays and that Cedric the Entertainer, Steve Harvey, and Tiffany Haddish never pulled up to this show. But Guy Tory came out and showed pictures that Cedric the Entertainer was there, you know, amongst Cat and a few other people at this specific specials. This part of 
where his story seems like it got debunked. When it comes to Kevin Hart, Cat Williams says that Kevin was never in LA selling out shows and that his whole upbringing was happening on the East Coast and that he was an industry plant, that they brought him over to LA and blew him up and helped him get movies because he said that Soul Plane and some of his other specials never took off. What do you guys think? Because I like Kevin Hart as well and Laugh At My Pain was one of the funniest things that he ever had. I went to it and saw it live when Shaq hosted it at one of the All-Star Weekends. I was definitely one that was reciting all the all right, all right, all right, and all the different lines that he was talking about. You gonna learn today, you know, so I followed Kevin Hart from that. But I will say in his later years, once he started doing more movies, I wasn't getting as many of the one-liners that I wanted from Kevin Hart. But it is kind of strange that he did go from one extreme, being relatively nobody, to the height of his career. I know that he was putting in work on the East Coast and I know that he was doing a lot of shows and selling out different places. So I'm not debunking Kevin's career at all, but it is kind of funny. Kevin actually responded back to this, but he didn't go in detail. He just promoted his new movie that was coming up and said that Cat was being bitter. But there's also times when Kevin was on The Breakfast Club and he was sitting there going in on Cat. I feel like it's, it's something that's a rivalry between comedians and there's not always gonna be love between every comedian. Some comedians aren't gonna like each other for one reason or another, and some reasons are valid and some aren't. We can only judge what we see and decide our opinions from there. And in case you watched the interview and you didn't understand Cat Williams' quote about Gary Owens, he's saying that Gary Owens is a real comedian and even though he's white and he's been in the industry for 25 years, he still can't be accepted on the other side of comedy, which is the industry comedy, you know, the mainstream comedy because the fact that he keeps it real and he's not one to do whatever they ask him and whatever they tell him. That's kind of crazy. Gary even came out and gave his own take on this interview as well because at first he wasn't sure if Cat was dissing him or if Cat was backing him. And I'm going to tell you guys now, Cat was actually backing him up and saying that he's a real comedian. Once Bernie Mac passed away, RP to one of the greatest comedians there is. Cat Williams says that he was offered to be the fourth king of comedy by those same guys, Cedric and Steve Harvey. I wonder if he actually got this offer and if it was turned down, but it seems like he would have been someone they would have asked to be on this Kings of Comedy tour because he is one of the funniest comedians in the business and that's still active. He probably would have stole the show, but he said he turned it down based on the fact that they treated Bernie Mac so bad and they acted like he wasn't one of the best. Didn't want to let him go last when it came to performing. His his performances are so strong it doesn't matter where you put him in the lineup. Bernie's gonna get his jokes off and people are gonna laugh the most. Hey Splashers, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for my part two of the Cat Williams Club Shay Shay interview. It'll be coming up soon. Like, comment, subscribe. Watch some of my other reviews like Color Purple and Rebel Moon and stay tuned for part two.